All right. So let's look at tree.java first, the tree class. This class is a tree in which each node has an arbitrary number of children. Cool. Really, in terms of the tree class itself, it doesn't need to keep track of a lot. There's only one instance variable. The tree simply needs to keep track of its root. That's it. So we're just going to create a single instance variable of type node, which is the root. Much like we did with the linked list, we have the public interface, the public class, like linked list, except here's the tree. And then we have an internal data structure, which is encapsulated and is done by a static inner class here. Um, so similar here, except here, this node represents a node in a tree, whereas in chapter 16, node represented a node in the linked list. So these node classes are different. This is like a node inside of a tree, not a node inside of a linked list. But they also have some similarities. So in both cases, for the linked list from last chapter and for the node that we need in a tree, we still need to have the data associated with the node of type object. So maybe we have a tree of strings for like our family tree that we saw, and this is George V. We could have a tree of anything. Um, another good example of an arbitrary tree is a file system on your computer, right? So on your Raspberry Pi, there is the root of the file system backslash, right? That's the root of the directory tree. You have a whole bunch of folders at that level of your system, like home, Etsy, var, um, all those different folders. Each of those folders are like nodes in the tree. They have subfolders, right? So inside of home, there's a folder for each user on your Raspberry Pi, and so on and so forth. So a directory tree is another type of arbitrary tree. All right, so there's public object data. Um, when we did the linked list, we just had to keep track of what was the next node in the linked list. With a tree, it's a little bit more complicated, at least for an arbitrary tree because a given node can have an arbitrary number of children. So we'll have a list of nodes. That way we can have as many children as we want. So these are the instance variables of the node class within the tree. We'll come back to the size method later. Let's look at the constructor here. So this method here constructs a tree with exactly one node and no children, has a single parameter, which is the data for the root of the tree. OK. So let's think of what we have to initialize here. We have the data for the root of the tree, so we actually need to make a new node for the root of the tree. So this dot root equals new node. And for this new node, we need to initialize all of its instance variables. So this dot root dot data equals root data. And this dot root dot children, it doesn't have any children, but we don't want to leave this instance variable as a null value. We want it to reference just an empty list. So we'll make a new array list with nothing inside. So an empty array list means it has no children. So this method lets us build up a very, very simple tree that only has one node and has no children. But that's still a good start, right? If we add just one more method, this one here, add subtree. 
where we can specify another tree as a parameter and this other tree, the subtree, is added as the last child of the root of this tree, then we're in really good shape and we can do a lot of stuff. So let's see what this would look like. Well, we're gonna, we already have our root because we're, this is a add subtree, it's a normal method, so we must have already constructed a tree. So we just need to add the specified subtree as a child to our list of children. So really, we can just say this.root.children.add. It's a lot of methods. We might be tempted to say subtree here. I know I'm tempted to say that. Um, but we get an error saying the type, a list of nodes, is not applicable for the arguments. The types don't match here. Subtree isn't a node, it references a whole tree. Okay, so this is something we need to keep in mind with this particular design philosophy that our textbook author takes, which is we have the tree class as the public class with which users interact, and then internally we've encapsulated this idea of a node. And a tree is not a node, and a node is not a tree. A tree has a node. So we have to here say add subtree.root. We want to add a reference to the root of the tree as a child. And then things will compile. I think that's confusing, the idea that there's the tree class and there's the node class and they're not the same thing. So just be aware of that as we're working through our, our programming activities in this chapter. Um, just be careful with your types. I mean, if you don't have it right, it's not going to compile, but I don't want you to be confused either. So, all right, cool. We've got one more method, which is, that we're going to implement now, which, yeah, sorry, question. because the root node is still linked to all the other children. It's just not wrapped in that tree class. We still have the whole thing. And so like, here, I got distracted here for a second, but here, like, let me show you, um, here is some code that actually builds this. So here, we're making a new tree with data and and that's the equivalent of making just this node with no children. And then we make another new tree with just the data Peter. So now we've made this tree and this tree. And then by calling our new add, oops, add subtree method, we're adding the tree, the subtree rooted at Peter to the tree rooted at Ant. So Peter is being added as a child of Anne, so now these two are linked. And then we can create a tree for Zara and link Zara to Anne, <coughs> at which point these three are all hooked up. And then finally we can create Savannah and add Savannah to T2, which is Peter. So Savannah becomes a child of Peter. So What's kind of cool is just with these two methods, with this constructor and this add subtree method, we can now build any arbitrary tree that we want. That's neat. And that's what this tree demo class does. It builds an arbitrary tree. It also prints out the size of the tree. The size of the tree is the number of nodes in the tree. So if we just focus on the tree rooted at Anne, we have Anne, Peter, Zara, Savannah. We've got four nodes. So let's write a method that calculates the size of the tree, calculates the number of nodes in the tree as an example. And you'll be writing more methods like this. Um, this is a classic example where recursion can work really well. And for an arbitrary tree, 
we can basically defer figuring out the size to the nodes. So we can just say return this.root.size. So basically the tree is like, I'm not gonna figure out the size of all the nodes in my tree. I'm gonna ask my root node to figure out the size instead. And here is the size method that I documented inside of the node class. We can update this to um, calculate the size of the whole tree. Or at least the tree rooted at this node. So if someone calls the size method on a node, then we know the size is at least one because there's the node it called the method on, right? So that's a start. Great example of recursion here. We're going to take one small step towards the solution. Well, I'm a node, so at least there's one node in this tree. I don't figure like I don't feel like figuring out the rest, so I'm going to defer this to each child of all my children. And I'm going to simply ask each child, "Hey child, what's the size of you and all of your children, all of your descendants?" Okay? Classic parenting move here, right? I do one little thing, the kids take care of everything else. And then I can just return that sum. Okay. So another, another example of recursion at work. We're going to be doing lots of recursion with our trees. Question, yes. Uh, it is plus equals, thank you. Typo, there we go. Now it even compiles, excellent. Let's run tree demo as a little example. It prints size is four. So it built this tree, calculated the size of the tree rooted at Anne, said there were four nodes in the tree. Perfect. 